ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله ايها المؤمنون عباد الله if you can have the brothers come forward as much as possible before commencing certainly allah azza wa jal he has revealed this religion of al islam for a great cause and an important reason to bring mankind forward from the darkness into the light to show them the path that would enter them into paradise and this religion it comes with the preservation of five matters which the ulama refer to as al daruriyat al khams and some refer to them as al kulliyat al khams the five essential aspects the religion of islam has come to preserve a deen the religion which is the greatest of these five it has come to preserve al aql the intellect of a person the religion of islam has come to protect an nasl which is the lineage of a person it has come to protect an nafs the soul of a person and it has come to protect al mal the wealth of a person these five aspects the religion of al islam comes to preserve and we find that there are things that affect these five aspects entirely or return back to one or more of these aspects with harm that we are doing or we find others doing and this is the matter of addictions and when we hear this term addictions what comes to mind often is a person being addicted to drugs or a person being addicted to alcohol and the likes of these mukhaddarat and narcotics which are used by a people who have been left to their souls and they have been overtaken this matter of addictions my fellow muslims by way of the meaning of the word and its definitions is more general than this and we see this person who may be addicted to a certain drug or alcohol and we feel sorry for them and we want to help them but we ourselves could be addicted to other things and we're not paying attention to this and we haven't realized the modern day addictions and the addictions of the 21st century they go far beyond the drugs and the alcohol which are rampant my fellow muslims you find people addicted to work what they refer to as workaholics and you find people addicted to studies and you find people addicted to the haram and the zina and fornication and adultery and you find people who are addicted to wanting fame and honor so you find a person addicted to work working 50 60 70 hours per week to the extent that a brother he told us of a man who was working more than the days of the month He took so many shifts that he went beyond the days of the month. The person he becomes attached and addicted to what he is doing and he forgets you have a greater purpose in this life. Your existence is not been put you have not been put upon the earth merely to work and do these jobs. There is a greater purpose. Now there is a matter of provision, but we do not go into extremes. Allah Azza wa Jal when he spoke about Qarun, they told him wa abtaghi fi ma ataka Allah ad-dar al-akhirah. ولا تنس نسيبك من الدنيا واحسن كما احسن الله اليك ولا تبغي الفساد في الارض الايه الله عز وجل he told us that the righteous people when they spoke to قارون they say he was a munafiq from the people of Musa alayhi salam and he was 
arrogant because of the wealth Allah gave him. The people, they said to him, what Allah has given you, seek by way of it the hereafter. Seek by way of it the hereafter. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَسِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا But do not forget your portion of this worldly life. But the matter has become misinterpreted and we find that we are chasing after the dunya and we're not forgetting our portion of the akhirah. So what has become first and foremost in our lives is work and how to provide and where to get wealth from to the extent that if you're to talk to a person many a time we have seen if you try to remind them about even the salawat in jama'ah the first thing they say Akhi, I'm busy is this not the case? have we become too busy to worship our creator who has placed us upon the earth for a matter of haq Allah Azza wa Jal says وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ we have not created the heavens and the earth and everything between them except in truth. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا لَاعِبِينَ We did not create the heavens and the earth and everything between them while we were joking or playing about. And Allah he says, وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاءَ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا بَاطِلًا We did not create the heavens and the earth and that which is between them in futility, in falsehood. They have a great reason for being there. For you to worship your creator and you find the person when he puts forward this dunya over his akhirah that he does not get anything from it except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote for him initially. It comes from the hadith of Ma'atil radiallahu an which is reported by Al-Hakim and others and it was authenticated by Al-Wadi'i in Sahih al-Musnad that Allah azza wa says in this hadith a hadith is Qudsi Ya ibn Adam tafarraq li'ibadati amla yadayka rizqa wa qalbaka ghina O oh, son of Adam, free yourself from my worship. Free yourself from my worship. I will fill your hands with provision. And I will fill your heart with richness. Are you not looking for this contentness that even if Allah is to give you little, that you are satisfied with Allah's provision? Are you not happy that Allah, if you free yourself for His worship, that He will fill your hands with richness? Then pay attention to the following part of this hadith. That Allah, He said, وَلَا تَبَعَدْ عَنِّي do not distance yourself from me. Do not distance yourself from me, O son of Adam. I will fill your hands with busyness and I will fill your heart with poverty. This is the state of many of us as Muslims. We're busy, all the time busy, running up and down. But we're not getting anything from this. And you find the person never content. If he was to be given the dunya, he would not be content and he is seeking more. And this is the state of the son of Adam generally. As the hadith of Ibn Abbas, as well as others from the Sahaba, they reported from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he said, لَوْ كَانَ لِبْنِ آدَمْ وَادِيَانِ مِنَ الذَّهَبْ لَبْتَغَى ثَالِثَا The son of Adam, if he had two valleys full of gold, he would seek a third one. وَلَا يَمْلَأْ جَوْفَ بْنَ آدَمْ إِلَّا التُّرَابْ وَيَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَى مَنْ تَابْ And the stomach, the inside of the son of Adam, is it never filled except by the dirt. And what is intended here is the dirt in your grave. You will never be satisfied if this is your state until you enter your grave. وَيَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَى مَنْ تَاب And Allah, He accepts the repentance of those who repent. مَعَاشِرَ muslimin. This matter of the addictions which are there, these are realities that you find a person addicted to his phone, that wallahi you become surprised that if the internet was to cut off in one go, and the phone stopped working at one go, what would happen to many of mankind? They favor them even over their own children. You find that if he doesn't have his phone, he's in a state of panic. He's frantic. He's not calm. Is this the state that we should be in? Ma'ashir al-Muslimin. These things, they have overtaken our hearts and overtaken our minds to the extent that we're not seeing anything but them. Have you been put upon the earth to, to live like this? live in the state of addiction to a phone. It has caused problems in the households, marital problems. You find a woman seeking divorce from her husband because he's addicted to WhatsApp. Or you find the, the, the man seeking a divorce from his wife because of her social media accounts. These are problems which are affecting the community. And there are problems that we need to be looking into and striving and solving. But if everyone remains quiet and we're seeing the munkar and it's an evil which we know about, then this is a reason for the evil to increase. And this is a reason 
For why Allah Azza wa Jal, He tells us, لُعِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ عَلَى لِسَانِ دَاوُودِ وَعِيسَ بْنَ مَرْيَمِ ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَصَوْا وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ كَانُوا لَا يَتَنَاهَوْنَ عَنْ مُنْكَرٍ فَعَلُوا لَبِئْسَ مَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ Allah Jalla wa Ala, He tells us about two prophets that cursed the children of Israel, who is Dawood, as well as Isa, the son of Maryam, alayhim as Allah Jalla wa Ala, He tells us the reason behind this, why they were cursed by these two prophets. This is because, كَانُوا لَا يَتَنَهُونَ عَنْ مُنْكَرٍ فَعَلُوا They will not prohibit, prohibit each other. They will not forbid each other from the evil that they are doing. So they would see the munkar, and it is rampant in society. And everybody says, this is not my business. This is not my affair. This is not my child. This is what has afflicted the Muslims. And you find that atheism, and you find that disbelief in Allah has become rampant amongst the youth. Go and look at the studies. You'll be shocked at the statistics which are there. And those who are silent about the matter, from those who have shuck in their iman or have even left the fold of Islam who are living a double life this is so much that you will be shocked to read the statistics and where are the Muslims everybody's busy with their own life everybody's busy with their children no one cares about this because it's not afflicting you directly until you wake up in shock and you see that you are from these people or that you see someone from your family is from these people this is when you want to wake up Ma'ashur al Muslimin. we are from the best of ummah we are the best of nations why? because of the inkar the rebuking of the munkar, rejecting the evil and commanding with the good. This is why Allah Azza wa Jalla has favored this ummah and He has raised it above the people. Ma'ashur al Muslimin, the addictions that go on, you find a person who is addicted to how they look, how they look, and you find the magazines and the posters and the billboards, and you're being bombarded and the thoughts are being put into your head. You must look like this person. So you find time to go to the gym and work out, and you're working out. Maybe two times a day. But when it comes to the salah and the ibadah, you're not capable of doing this. Has your body and your physique and how you look become more important than the worship of your creator? Allah Azza wa Jal who can take your soul in a minute and return you back to Him. What will be your answer? As to why you weren't praying. What will be your answer? As to why you weren't fulfilling His tawheed and worshipping Him alone and trying to understand His religion. Why would it be that we will be left on this dunya as a joke and to be doing what we wish? And being left to live upon this earth without any commandments and prohibitions. أَيَحْسَبُ insan and يُتْرَكَ suda. Does mankind perceive that he'll be left to live sudan? The ulama mentioned, لَا يُؤْمَرْ وَلَا يُنْهَى Do you think you will live upon the earth? You're not commanded to do anything. Nor are you prohibited from doing anything. And you will live as you wish. This worldly life as we have mentioned, you as a believer are placed therein. And you are living as a person who is in a prison. This is how the believer is. You're looking at your guidelines. I can't do this. I can't say this. I can't watch this. I can't listen to this. Because Allah he is not happy. We are abid. We are nothing more than slaves of the Creator. The most merciful. A short time in this worldly life. Then be idhinillahi azza wa jal. When you pass this test and you return back to your Creator, al-Mawla, you will be happy. You will be happy to receive your book in your right hand. You will be happy because of what you did in this dunya and your striving. Ma'ashir al-Muslimin, the addictions there are many, and they are afflicting the young, the old, all, no one is safe from them. But the affair is to realize there is a problem, realize that there is a mistake which needs to be rectified urgently. Have you not seen when there is a crisis that it must be identified and they solve it as, as quickly as possible? The crisis is there, the problem is there, we know, look at yourself, look at yourself in reality, and look at your daily life. You may be from these categories of people, these categories who have been afflicted by one or more of these addictions, which are returning back to your wealth and destroying your wealth, such as those who are addicted to the cigarettes. And you find that when this first came about, many people would say it's makruh, it's disliked, it's disliked, it's disliked. Who dislikes it? Have you ever asked yourself, who dislikes it? Is disliked by Allah? Is disliked by the Rasul of Allah? And then we're doing it and we're saying it's disliked. Ma'ashur al-Muslimin. Where our hearts and where have our thoughts gone? Intentionally going beyond the boundaries of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the reality of the matter is that it is prohibited in an absolute sense. This is because of the dharar and the harm that it brings to your body. When you were given this body by Allah Azza wa Jal, you were not given this body to do as you please with it, 
This is why we're not, we're not putting tattoos on our bodies and decorating it. There's a hadith that indicate the impermissibility of this. And this is because this body is a man upon you. You must live as Allah Azza wishes for you to live. Likewise, you have with these cigarettes and these things which are used, this body is an amana. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentions from the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, which is reported by Bayhaqi and others, la darara wa la dirar. There is no harm which is to be done intentionally or inadvertently. And what is intended by that is that you are not physically harming yourself or harming others intentionally, or you're doing something that will lead to their harm, even if you're not intenting, intending it. So you're doing something that you know will harm your neighbor, or that will harm someone else, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim. So you leave it and you say, that's none of my business. We're not permitted to do this, ma'ashir al-Muslimin. So these bodies are a trust to you. You've been entrusted to fulfill the right of Allah Azza wa with them. And we as Muslims must be the best of example to mankind. Showing them that we are those who Allah Azza wa Jal's regulations and rulings, they apply to them. And for this reason, you have a purpose. Many of the people walk the earth and they tell you openly, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what the purpose is of my existence. So you become amazed that a person who Allah has favored above the animals, that Allah has favored. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَزَّقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا Allah says we have favored the son of Adam and we have provided for them from the good provisions and we have raised them over many of those who we have created in levels. So Allah has chosen the children of Adam and favored them and gave them this posture. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ your posture, there's nothing from the creation that walks like you, that looks like you. And then you live the earth and you believe you have no purpose. You have no purpose. Even the food that enters your body and exits, it has a purpose. So the person sees himself to be less than that which is exiting his body from the filth. Ma'ashir al It is important for us as Muslims and as a nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to be looking at what will grant us safety and to be commanding one another with good and prohibiting one another from evil. Otherwise, if we are left to the state that we are in, it will cause us a damage and it will cause us a harm that only Allah Jalla wa Ala knows. Nasallallah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi manihi wa karami wa ihsani an yu'inana ala ta'ati wa alhamdulillah. الحمد لله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد ما فل المسلمز when we look at those noble generations the generation of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and those who followed them and those who followed them and when Islam had عز and might you find more so in the first generation than any other generation that the might and the izzah that Allah He gave them. This is because of al ilm ma al amal, knowledge and action together. They would not go beyond the Quran unless they understood the ayat that they have memorized. They would implement it. They would strive in it. And this is why Allah He raised them. When you look at the worldly gains and the advancements in the infrastructure as well as the societies generally, you don't find much. The city of Medina, ala basatatiha, simple town, but Allah Azza wa brought forward from there might and izzah. Now we have the dunya and we have the wealth, and you find this in terms of our status in Swali life, lower than many. As a nation, what raised those people, as we mentioned, was knowledge and action. They would understand the Qur'an. They would try to implement what is in the Qur'an. They would understand the sunnah. And they would strive in implementing what is in the sunnah. And you find many of us as Muslims, maybe we have grown old in age. And we have never given time to even understand the Fatiha that we are reading on a daily basis in our prayer. This Fatiha 
that we're reading on a daily basis, we have not even given effort to understand it. How do we expect success? And how do we expect advancements? And we're not giving concern to this. But when it comes to the dunya, and it comes to what is going on on a political scale, or on a social scale, and what this country is doing, and what that country is doing, we have much information. Allah Azza wa Jal, He has disparaged the disbelievers for having this trait with them. Allah Jalla wa Ala said about them, يَعْلَمُونَ الظَّاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ مَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ غَافِلُونَ They know much about the worldly life, but they are heedless about their akhirah. So those generations, they were not heedless about their akhirah. This was their goal, and this is what their hearts were yearning for. And Allah, He raised them because of this. Allah Jalla wa Ala, He struck an example in the Noble Quran between the believers and the munafiqoon. وَإِذَا مَا أُنزِلَتْ سُورَةً فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ أَيُّهُمْ زَادَتْهُ هَذِهِ إِيمَانًا When a surah is revealed, they say, who has been increased in iman from this? فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَزَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَهُمْ يَسْتَبْشِرُونَ As for those who believe, then it increases them in iman, and they rejoice in these ayat. وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٍ فَزَادَتْهُمْ رِجْسًا إِلَى رِجْسِهِمْ وَمَاتُوا وَهُمْ كَافِرُونَ And as for those in which there is a heart, there is a disease in their heart, it has increased them in doubt and suspicion. Doubt and suspicion on top of that which they already had. And they die as disbelievers. This is the difference between those people and many of the Muslims today. When the ayat are revealed and the Qur'an were coming down to them by way of the Prophet wasallam. They would know what is being said to them. They would know when Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, that this is a matter to give their ear to. Let's hear what Allah is telling us. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, what is Allah telling us? Let us pay attention. But today, many matters have taken our hearts and these addictions are rampant. Those that we have mentioned and others have not seen people becoming anorexic. Why? Because of how they look and they're concerned how the people will see them. Have you not seen people Giving their life to this dunya. Allah Jalla wa Ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ittaqu Allah wal tandur nafsun, ma qaddamat li ghadin wa attaqu Allah, inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amaloon, wa la takunu kal ladheena nasu Allah, fa ansahum anfusahum, ulaika humul fasiqoon. Do not be like those, do not be like those, who forgot Allah, and Allah Azza wa Jal caused them to forget themselves. They are the rebellious ones. نسأل الله جل وعلا أن لا يجعلنا من هؤلاء الذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم اللهم خذ بنا واسنا إلى الخير اللهم خذ بنا واسنا إلى الخير اللهم ادفع عنا وعن المسلمين الشر والفتن والضير والحمد لله رب العالمين